is Dallas on your list of places that you're considering relocating? What? Well, today we're going to be talking about things that you absolutely must know before moving here to Dallas. So let's do this. So you can easily Google things you need to know before moving to Dallas, and that's going to give you a good list. But here's my list. So the first thing that you really need to know is that Dallas is huge. It's home to 1.3 million people. Good gravy. Just in the city alone, not to mention all the separate suburbs and surrounding cities that make Dallas what it is. So when someone says they live in Dallas, it could be North Dallas, South Dallas, East Dallas. It could be the west side of Dallas closer to Fort Worth. And that's really what makes living in Dallas a little bit difficult. Because if you're from a very small town, it may be difficult for you to navigate the big city of Dallas. So make sure you do your research. And to help you with that research, I've created a video already all about the 10 best places to live in and around Dallas. All right, so a couple more things that you need to know about Dallas is the fact that Whataburger is a big deal. What a burger! Here in Texas, for whatever reason. How do, and how do I feel about Whataburger? It's okay. It's like any other fast food restaurant chain. Also, Chick-fil-A is a really big deal here. And it's crazy because even though the franchises are just two miles apart, both will be busy and have cars wrapped around it. And the other restaurant that some Texans swear by I kind of like this one. Uh, it's called Dairy Queen and it's only in Texas, but the blizzards are really awesome. They're kind of known for that and a couple other frozen treats. I don't know. It's like a, a McFlurry, but it's better. And they have these awesome, I don't know, they're like awesome popsicles, like a little ice cream on a stick. Okay, we'll just call it. It's in the shape of a star usually and they're called Star Kiss. So if you're ever in Texas and you happen to stumble upon a Dairy Queen, you want to go get a star kiss. Just saying. So the third thing that you're going to really need to know before you move here to Dallas is the fact that we have quite a few tolls here. So there are several tolls that you can get on and off for a fee and they can get little, they can get pretty expensive. Not only that, but the tolls are connected to your bank account. As soon as you deplete the $40 that you gave them, it charges you another $40 until you deplete that. What? So keep that in mind whenever you're driving here around Dallas. Um, if you don't want to get a bill in the mail for it, um, just make sure that you're aware of which roads are toll roads and which roads are free, <laughs> okay? So the other thing that kind of goes with tolls is the traffic. So. There is a rush hour. Obviously it starts right around 6 a.m. and it's gonna be done probably closer to 10 o'clock because I've seen traffic around nine in certain places. You're also gonna have a rush hour in the evenings. Uh, it's gonna start obviously around maybe 3.30, 4, probably closer to four o'clock. And then it's gonna end probably right around 6, 6.30 for the evening commute. Now, if there's an accident or construction, I mean, that's where I love uh, Google Maps. And also another great app that I really enjoy is called Waze. And it will give you an alternate route if you wanna avoid tolls, if there's construction ahead, or if there's even traffic ahead, it'll kind of get you a way around those types of incidences. So that's really extremely helpful when you're trying to get around the big city of Dallas. So just make sure when you're on the road that you plan ahead and if you're out and about during those certain times that I mentioned, just anticipate that you're going to have some traffic your way and plan accordingly. All right, so home prices here in Dallas are going to be pretty moderate compared to some other major cities in and around the state. So the median home price here in Dallas 
for three beds, two baths, and just over a thousand square feet is going to be right around $234,000. Awesome! Which is pretty good for Texas. The tax rate here in Dallas compared to some other cities in Texas as well as the nation is pretty high. It sits right around 2.73%. You're killing me! which in my opinion is a little bit on the high side. So make sure that you ask your real estate agent that's helping you what those property taxes are so you're not surprised at closing and you see the bill. Something that can help those higher property taxes would be just to file for your homestead exemption. Your real estate agent should be reminding you of when you can file for that. Also, if you are a disabled vet, you will get either all of your property taxes waived or part of them. So make sure that you ask those questions. And if you are over 65, you also get a discount on your property taxes, which makes it really nice. Now, the one thing that I will say about Texas that's different than some of the other states is that we do not have a state income tax. All right, so the next thing that you really need to know about Dallas, Texas is that it's Cowboys Nation here. <laughs> and also we have crazed Dallas Stars fans as well as dedicated Dallas Mavericks fans, which I am, by the way. So if you are a fan of another NHL group, NBA group, or football team, try not to yell so loud, okay? Come on! <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. All right, so the next thing that we need to have a little chat, a little heart to heart about is the weather here in Dallas. So because we are in Tornado Alley, we experienced some pretty severe weather. Surprise! Not only tornadoes, but also hail, straight line winds, and some thunderstorms can blow through. And the weather station is excellent about giving us all types of warnings in advance whenever the severe weather comes. And they'll let you know what to expect if it's like a hail threat or a high winds is the threat, whatever the threat might be. Sometimes in the winter, it won't quite snow. And if it does snow, it's not gonna stick. And if you can build a snowman, congratulations, you've just built the tiniest snowman ever that's melting in your driveway tomorrow, okay? So it's not gonna snow usually. We did have snow here in McKinney last, what was it, January or February? Kind of late in the season. And that was our one snow day. Sometimes we'll get some pretty severe, either freezing rain or ice will come through in the winter. And when that happens, things get shut down. Schools will close. Major events will get canceled. Your church will shut down, okay? All because of the ice. And because we're Texans and we don't drive in the snow, we also don't know how to drive in the ice. So keep that in mind whenever you're driving, especially if it's a very dangerous, icy, slippery area. You might be driving awesome, but the person next to you might be crazy. So be safe out there. <laughs> Something that you're also going to notice when you move here to Texas is the fall isn't quite fall and the spring isn't quite spring. So usually right around September, October, even into parts of November, it's going to fluctuate. So you'll have days of hot, 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 and then a cold front will come through and knock the weather down to 60, 70, 50 degrees sometimes. And then the next day you're up to 80 again. The spring is kind of the same story. It'll be cold, 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 and then we'll have a hot day, and then it'll go yo-yo back up to the cold again, and then we'll go back up to hot weather. The spring is where you really wanna pay attention to the severe weather, because we can get more severe weather in the spring than any other season out of the year. So just keep an eye on your radars and your TV and all your apps that you have for the weather. All right, so most people that move here to the Dallas-Fort Worth area might experience a little bit more when it comes to allergies. <laughs> now, the reason for this is because Texas in general is more of a moderate climate, meaning that we have flowers that will pollinate 
all year long. And so as a result of them pollinating, it creates more pollen floating and blowing around in the air. The local news actually puts out a mold and pollen count every day so you can kind of see where things are gonna be falling for the day. The peak season for allergies is gonna be in that July, August range. The best thing for you to do, if, especially if you're moving to any new area and you do have allergies where you currently are living is to make sure you check in with an allergist um, or if you develop new allergies, you wanna be talking with a doctor about those. And there's a great thing called Zyrtec. <laughs> My husband uses it on a regular basis. So just be aware that there is a little bit more of an allergy issue here here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. All right, so next we need to talk a little bit about critters. So these critters are a little bit of annoyance, but you really need to know about them before you move here to Texas. So during certain parts of the year, we will get lots of grasshoppers and crickets. At night, when it's hot and humid, you may see crickets and grasshoppers jump out at you. The other thing you need to be aware of are snakes. So if you decide that you want to live near a body of water here in Texas, just be aware that there could be some snakes, especially water moccasins in certain areas. I've seen cottonmouths, uh, garden snakes, and I uh, haven't seen any rattlesnakes here in Dallas specifically, which is great. You do see a lot of spiders here in the area. I would say the most poisonous uh, here in Dallas are gonna be your black widow and your brown recluse, but there are plenty of large, scary looking, but they're not harmful, uh, garden spiders that you will see, especially if, a, if you have a front porch, you're gonna see them develop their web along your porch posts there. <laughs> we do see June bugs in we don't see them in June. We more likely see them in May, the month before. But we'll see little June bugs pop up and they may jump on you or jump in your hair. And those critters are seasonal. When you're walking outside in a very wooded area, I would anticipate maybe some chiggers or ticks or mosquitoes and flies. I mean, that's pretty common in any kind of moderate tropical kind of area. Sometimes you'll get a swarm of bees that will just swarm in a certain area, we had that happen to us, one of our trees in our backyard, the bees just started to swarm and we got that fixed really quickly. We had the bee person come and they actually extracted the bees and took the bees away. You'll see an occasional scorpion here in Texas as well. They're not the huge ones, they're like the little brown tiny ones, okay? One critter that's really helpful are those lizards, those geckos, some of them are kind of transparent, some of them have more of a color to them, but they're great for eating bugs in and around your house. At the very least, they might scare you because they're they're moving really quickly. What's a good word for that? I don't know. We have squirrels and they can be kind of a nuisance if they can if they get in your attic. So be aware of the squirrel thing and you can't technically kill it. You have to capture it. The last critter that I do want to tell you about quickly are the coyotes and bobcats. Even in more of a city setting, we'll have coyotes and bobcats kind of roam around, especially if you live further away from Dallas in more of a rural area. You're definitely gonna t wanna take your cats and your small dogs and have them inside so that that way they're protected from the coyotes or possibly bobcats. So deer can also be an issue if you're driving late at night on a two-lane road and the deer jumps out in front of your car and really does a lot of damage to it. Also sometimes you'll see a, a nice little dusty pile of dirt just kind of pile up over a certain part of your grass. That little mound of dirt belongs to fire ants. So you definitely want to keep an eye out in your yard for fire ants, spray for them regularly, because just like the name says, they're pretty fiery when it comes to their bite. The highways here in Dallas, Texas are larger than normal. So they're gonna be anywhere from four to five to six lane highways. And you can have some people driving a little bit slow in the right lane. And then in the far left, they're zooming and whizzing past everyone. So just be cautious and be aware if you're trying to get over or if your exit's coming up and you need to get over like a couple of lanes, give yourself a little bit of time to get over and to make the appropriate exit. And just be aware of those people that aren't driving as well as you are. Come on! 
The other thing to note is because we don't have severe weather that affects the roads a whole lot, if you live up north, you know that you receive a lot of ice and snow and it can be very dangerous and you have to know how to drive on those types of conditions when you live up north. Well, here in Texas, because we don't experience it as frequently, I would say Texas drivers aren't as cautious as a result of that. Just be aware of your surroundings and you should be a-okay. All right, next we're gonna talk about the culture here in Dallas. So in Dallas, we have a very diverse culture. We have people not only moving from other states here in the United States, there are people coming here from all over the world, from Korea, from China, from India, from the Philippines, from Australia, from New Zealand. They're coming all over here and making Dallas a more diverse place to live. And we also see a lot of diverse food as a result. And that, my friends, is a really beautiful benefit of the diverse nature of Dallas. And because of the cultural diversity, there are many events and activities that will center around certain holidays and certain celebrations that are celebrated in other parts of the world that we get to experience right here in Dallas. Well, that's all for today's video. Click here to watch more, and I will see you on the next one. And the cool, not the cool thing. I just don't know. Um, but 